part. I am smart Jen. Yeah, the boys like her. Back with the Rod and Fez show. Thanks for being with us. And join us on August 12th, Thursday night, when we broadcast live from Dave and Buster's. That was crazy Jen Watley, and she's going to be with us that night coming up with a stunt, Fez. And I believe she's in the running to be in a reality TV show. Yeah, she uh, wants. Uh, she's made it to another round, I think, of faking it. Yeah. Uh, audition round, anyway. Yeah, I haven't seen faking it yet, but I did go and check out the TiVo thing just to make sure it's a real show, and it is. I know. Doesn't faking it sound like a Joe Schmo show? My my thing is, she went out of her way to get on a reality show, and I was so petrified that some bad producers were just going to grab her and do awful things to her, and just start, you know. It was going to be a snuff film by the time they were done. She could get on Survivor and the same thing's going to happen. Mark Burnett will take care of her. Uh, are you watching any reality uh, programming this summer? Uh, very big into Big Brother 5. Oh, Big Brother 5. Watch that on Saturday. Uh, here's my problem with that. I am kind of a couple days ahead of you. So where are you in the program? Because for me, I am because I'm watching it online. From Is it CBS.com or you got to get it off the real networks? Yeah, CBS.com, you can yeah. get it from there. Uh, and now, and I don't think it's very expensive. I highly recommend it to anyone who watches reality shows on two different things. When you're watching it, you you have the possibility of seeing some great action. Uh, you know, the, the fights last an hour instead of two minutes. You see it all building up. And it only costs about as much as what you'd be paying for one professional wrestling event, and it goes on for months and months and months. And if I get the uh, if I get the chance, sometimes I'll go home at night or when I'm writing stuff online for the show, and I'll just have it on in the background until I hear screaming, and then go over and watch it. So where are you in Big Brother right now, Fez? Where I'm at is Drew had one had a household and he did his nomination ceremony. Oh, with Holly and uh, Nokomis. <laughs> yeah. So I'm already uh, a couple days uh, ahead of you on that. I know about the veto. I know uh, about who it looks like the house is putting out and all that kind of stuff. Where were you when Drew decided to kind of go against the boys there? I couldn't believe that he would screw that up. They yeah. had it locked up. They needed, like they said, they needed another week to break up, to either take out Marvin or one of the strong girls. Now, Drew is one of those kind of guys, and you'll see him on Survivor, Big Brother, any of those kind of strategy shows where he lets the big mean people pull him along. He, like, rides in their wake. But then he also tries to be appear to be the nice one that the people are working against. Yeah, he wants to be, he wants to hang with the studs, but he also wants to play the little brother role. Yeah, he's doing that gimmick. And also, they have a Bible in there. So some of the girls have been going to him with the Bible, uh, reading verses about, you know, why they shouldn't be put up on the block, reading verses about why he should change teams. He just gets really confused and cries. And the black guy on there, Marvin, goes like this. Well, this is a game. This ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. A Bible should not even be permitted in this house. And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. And I'm at home. I'm watching this on the computer. I'm going, if you really believed in the Bible, it, should, it belongs everywhere. Uh, you know, a coach will use it. A marriage counselor will use it. It's used for business. You don't get to pick and choose when it's Bible time. Marvin, who keeps throwing out his same joke, I trust him about as far as I could throw a fat girl, or, yeah. or Star Jones even, he'll throw out. Yeah. He just uh, disgusted Julie Chen when he said that to her, when she was interviewing him on Saturday. Well, she is the newest person I listen to, Julie Chen. Um, but it's a, a, but Fez, there's a couple twists by the next time, next Tuesday. I know you don't want to ruin it, want me to ruin it for you. No, don't ruin it for me. But uh, let's just let it be known this. He definitely screwed up about who he put up and all, and then he does have to deal whether he stays with the boys or switches sides. Okay, that I can pretty much figure out. And I just hope Adria stays in the house so that her twin can enter too. That's my right now that's my only thing I'm working towards. And I thought for sure she was gonna end up nominated this past weekend. Mm hmm. What do you know something? Yeah, I know stuff. You know something about Adrian and Natalie, the twins? I do know stuff. 
stuff will come out this week about the twins. But you'll have to wait till Tuesday because you don't have the right kind of feed. You still have dial-up like it's 1995. I know. i got to take care of that. So is that the only reality TV shows that you're watching? What else am I watching? Amazing Race I'm into. I can't get into Amazing Race. For I've, the first time. I've tried before. I don't like the constant running with suitcases it, and the constant we caught a taxi. One thing that I really don't like is any sort of when they make an old person run. I have no problem making them, watching them make the little person run, but when they make an old guy run, that makes me nervous. Well, that happens with, like, all those reality shows when you watch, uh, like, uh, Survivor, and you start to go, and, like, the first week, we got to get rid of the old lady. And you're like, come on, man. <laughs> You have to be so blunt about it. Rudy on Survivor All-Stars made me nervous. Uh, what do you watch, Jay? Does you in any re reality programming? Uh, the only one I really watch every week is Extreme Home Makeover. And I don't know if that's... Gonna... Is that the one? Yeah, it is reality program. They yeah. tear down the whole house or tear it up? Yeah, they, they tear it all down and then they rebuild them like a whole new house sometimes. For me now, I have uh, turned around on this. And I think, Fez, you turned me around when you said... Uh, that even Queer Eye is reality programming. And I used to think, no, it's really got to have the long thing. It's just so much of that kind of programming, you might as well call it all reality. I'll see how TiVo, if they put Queer Eye in as their little reality programming thing. I would, have bet, I would bet that they would. Have you noticed that Queer Eye is uh, got no heat at all this year? It's back on. There are a lot of episodes into their second season. They're not getting any magazine covers. They're not getting on all the big talk shows. And none of your friends are talking about it anymore. Yeah, I haven't heard Ward 1 from my group. And, um, you know, they don't get those NBC specials where they're on primetime NBC anymore, like they did when they first went on Bravo. Oh, I was also going to tell you this. Big, uh, on, on the Internet, Big Brother, uh, there's a uh, once-a-day program done on CBS.com that you can only watch on the internet and it's done with like some female disc jockey and Marcellus from the first season and he just dishes the dirt on how he would play it differently and I'm going it's so weird that after the after like a year after you don't remember where somebody went out and you don't remember who was on his season with him yeah, Marcellus, I think he went out like he, there was like four others ahead of him or something. He made the huge mistake his year of not taking himself off the block right. and thinking it will be better for the team. And then they voted him off. And when he heard his name, he did the big, like he got shot and he started to <laughs> stagger out. He had the vapors and almost fainted. And that stuff, the weird thing about reality program programming is it seems so important at the time and at the end of it you know it's not really a part of history like i don't know a big mary tyler moore show where people will still remember years later well it does seem like oh well i'll never forget marsalis yeah you know and like i'll remember all these people's names and when we compare it to next season you know we'll say who played smart who played dumb and you don't remember anyone's name yeah. All right, here's something AOL for Broadband is running this right now. Uh, a lot of it is best reality moment, Fez. I'll give this one uh, to you. See how you do with it. Uh, Fantasia, uh, th would you vote this is the best? Fantasia, the idol winner. Who could forget that? That was exciting. Donald Trump tells Bill he's hired. Uh, America awards the $1 million to Rupert. Trista ties the knot with Ryan on The Bachelor. And John lies about his grandmother's death. What was your number one reality moment of the year? Fant I, don't, I don't know why we're doing this <laughs> in July anyway. Fantasia wins American Idol. Really? That was big for you? Yeah. I remember being really excited about that Donald Trump thing, too, though. Yeah, I was, I was pretty sure Kwame was going to get it. And I'm not, I might sound racist, but I was one of the people who... Uh, I was glad Kwame didn't win. I don't know why. I just didn't like him as much as Bill. Uh, the $1 million for Rupert didn't work it for you? That I was really excited about and I was hoping for, and I remember watching it excited. But no one, yes, who else are they going to give it to? I was hoping, Tom from Kentucky? Or I was Virginia? hoping there would be a twist and he wouldn't win just to <laughs> see him once again have to tell his family he doesn't have it. 
Uh, John about his dead grandma. That didn't work for you? That was huge. Yeah, yeah. but uh, not as an overall moment. That was a huge one. And uh, The Bachelor you don't watch, right? No, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen I, one episode of The Bachelor. I've attempted to watch some of the dating games before. And I, uh, Joe Millionaire was the only one I probably watched pretty good because I thought it would be more shocking when they found out the truth. But it's just not a good show. It's just handing out roses to people and it doesn't work. You had something, Dubs? Oh, I thought you did. I thought I. You have a tendency to kind of go closer to the mic without meaning to, and I keep thinking you're trying to work your way into the conversation. I have a very wheezy, like sway thing going. It's where... almost the pee pee dance where you're moving when you don't need to be, and I keep thinking, well, just hop in if you need to. Wonder Boy used to do it to me because he would make facial expressions, like he wanted to be part of it. Yeah, like he would, like if you would say something, he'd like scratch his chin and tilt his head and think. Wow, that's a very interesting point. All right, try this, Fez. This is the Viewer Awards from AOL for Broadband. Uh, was this the most surprising moment of the year? Uh, Paul Schaefer reports Dave's baby news. A helicopter crashes into Dr. Romano on ER. Rachel kisses Ross before the Paris trip. Latoya London voted off. Or Boston Rob proposes to Amber. Uh, LaToya London voted off of American Idol. I'm going with another Idol moment. I'm going to go in the opposite from here, and I'm going to go Paul Schaefer saying that Dave is going to have a kid because that one actually had me shocked like this can't be happening. I had no idea that Dr. Drake Ramori on ER got hit with a helicopter. Yeah, that, that would be mine because I remember watching it. Like, what the hell are they going to do now? What's going on here? I had to watch it in the next couple of weeks, see if they actually died and... I don't follow those shows. I don't know what it is about me. All right, here is best teary-eyed moment. This is when the best moment when someone cries on TV. <laughs> and I do like to see a cry. All right, Britney Spears breaks down on primetime. The Backstreet Boy, Nick Carter, cries after he found on Punk. He was another boy band kid who cried. He thought he hit someone with a car. Uh Rupert reunites with his wife on Idol and American Cried. Uh, Trent Dilfer on the Today Show discussing his son dying. Oh, that's so sad. Well, that's why it's in here for best teary-eyed moment. And Aniston's choked up about friends on primetime. I guess Jennifer Aniston cried on primetime, telling us the friends was over. All right, I think Dilfer was the only one who had a right to cry. Yeah. But I don't want to call that best moment. How can you say that's the best moment? Um, I'm going to say the Rupert reunion with his wife. i got to go for Trent Dilfer to lose his kid, Fezzi. I mean, how could you not cry along? If I even hear somebody like that, I, I, for me it's like hearing about like a one-legged dog, and it makes me actually sit and think about the rest of my life. That's so rough to even put that in there with uh, like reality-type moments. What about when Little Brother... Uh, lost his uh, all three of his legs and only had the one leg when he was on Homestar Runner. All right, here you go, uh, Fezzi. This is going to be... No, I actually just got bumped online. Why am I doing this? <laughs> now I'm going to cry. I'm back on again. I'm back on just for a second. And it's our computer, not the beautiful AOL for broadband. <laughs> our partner. They're still fixing things in here. Yeah. <laughs> They're still trying to get all the kinks out of the new monitors and computers. Speaking of which, when do I get my new computer all worked out? We're we're working with that. Actually, the whole system crashed today right before Don and Mike went on. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what went wrong? Because uh, they never updated the version. We were still running the trial version of uh, what we had in here, and then they stopped, run they stopped even... Uh, yeah, the trial ran out. Yeah, they stopped putting uh, commercials on cart uh, for a backup. And I hate it crash. when a trial runs out. Have you noticed ever since uh, Wonder Boy left? People call me Wonder Boy. I know they do. Uh, we haven't had an engineer hang around at night anymore. Yeah, I didn't notice that. That's one thing I have noticed. And I thought that Wendell was all of our friends, but he was just Wonder Boy's friend. More than we knew. I was thinking about that today, tonight, when I didn't <laughs> see him again. Oh, I thought you were sitting and thinking of it all. I go, man, you carry things far. <laughs> Oh, I'll take it all home with me. <laughs> I know you Including do. Including computer paper. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Definitely said that. Why don't you get your own computer paper? It's not that uh, bad. Oh, they got stacks here that they're not even using. 
All right, this is best kiss, Fuzzy of the Year. Uh, Brittany and Madonna kissing, Ross and Rachel, Seth and Summer on the OC, uh, Gary and Brad on the Emmy Awards, or uh, Simon and Paula on American Idol. What was the best kiss? Ooh, let me get Madonna, Brittany. Yeah, you can't even get involved with that one. I mean, that that one made the front page of the New York Times. Ross and Rachel, we've seen that a million times. <laughs> I'm never going to vote for Brad Garrett kissing anybody. All right, here is uh, best musical moment of the year. Uh, William Hung auditions on American Idol. Prince duets with Beyonce. Uh, Fantasia's final idol. The Fab Five rocks out with Vince Neil, which I don't even remember. <laughs> and then uh, Vanilla Ice heats up a karaoke bar on The Surreal Life. <laughs> uh, give me Prince and Beyonce. I can't believe I didn't see The Fab Five with Vince Neil. Did you see that one, Fab? No, I never saw that, but Vince Neil was supposed to have his own makeover show. Uh, when I saw uh, the Grammy Awards... And nobody knew that Prince was going to be there. And he was just like standing in a bright light. And then he came walking down the steps. I'm, I'm watching with my family. And I actually go, it's Prince! <laughs> and like every, walked through the room. Like everybody just turned and looked at me like, stop showing your 80s roots. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> That's every time I watch wrestling and Kane shows up. Yeah, it basically is. That was uh, that was it for you, Fess. It was a cane moment. Boy, you'd think we'd have better moments to choose from, from huh. throughout the year. Yeah, I'm not even going to go into any of these other ones. Most of them kind of stink. Maybe we got a, all right, a funniest moment. I'll give you that, Fess, because I know you like the comedy so much. Love it. Uh, Jessica Simpson needs a vocabulary lesson. Bill Murray's golden victory speech when he got the Golden Globes. Dave Chappelle portrays Rick James. Ben Affleck uh, warns about Gigi on Saturday Night Live. And Joey stars in a Japanese commercial on Friends. All right, the Joey thing was just awful. I'll go to the Bill Murray Golden Globes Award speech. The only difference is i got to give it to D Dave Chappelle on Rick James because I hear it wherever I go. I would honestly say this. I, I never watched the show, but every human being in America must watch the show and do that I'm Rich Biatch thing back at me every time I go out of my house. This impression must be just dead on, huh? It's one of those things, like one of those catchphrases that has caught uh, part with everybody in America, regardless of age, income, it doesn't matter. It's Schwarzenegger doing girly men where that wasn't even Schwarzenegger's original catchphrase. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. We're now Rick James is starting to do Rick James stuff. All right, Fuzzy, we're going to take another break here. We do got a gig coming up, though. August 12th, we are going to be at Dave and Buster's Broadcasting Live. That's a Thursday night at the White Flint Mall in Bethesda. The hypnotist is going to be on hand. Don the hypnotist from hypnotictouch.com who got me to fly. Yeah. Comfortably. Now, he's going to do a uncens uncensored hypnotic show. We should probably get him in a couple times before we do the gig so we can just hang out, find out what kind of people we need with us that want to be hypnotized. It's a lot of fun to do hypnosis. It really is. I know some people don't believe in it. I've seen it work, though. And look at you. You're flying everywhere. I enjoy both sides of it. I like being hypnotized, and I like looking at people hypnotized. Oh, yeah, I know. I There's <laughs> nothing I like better than seeing somebody get hypnotized. Dubs, you've done it before, right? Yeah, I've done it twice. And you like it? Oh, yeah. It, it, it's so refreshing after you're done it's like you slept a full eight hours you might have been under only a half hour 45 minutes it's great now at the same time uh, a lot of people don't believe in it why do you think that is because it, i don't think people believe that you can get your mind controlled by someone else like it, they don't understand what it really is yeah they they think that you're just a zombie when really you're just subconscious i think most of the times it came it comes from like uh, crazy old 
uh, like movies from the 30s. So many of those weird old movies where they'd have the watch going back and forth, and then they would make the guy uh, rob a bank or something. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a few moments. 866-277-4969. This is the Ron Fest Show.